It's time for number 17 in my series of comic book movie reviews. And at the end of last week's episode when talking about this movie, I said that we might get some boobage. Well, that was a gross understatement. Sheena, also known as Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, is brought to us by director John Gillerman. Stars Tanya Roberts, Ted Wass, and Donovan Scott. Sheena grew up in the African wild, raised by a mystical witch woman. When her foster mother is framed for murder, Sheena is forced to flee, helped by her abilities to talk to animals and her knowledge of the jungle. So Sheena is kinda like a female Tarzan, sorta. After the death of her parents at a young age, she is raised by a jungle tribe in Africa. And apparently the people of this tribe can go all Aquaman on land fearing animals animals and speak to them. We see her learning how to do this pretty early in the movie and really the way that they do it is pretty funny. They just kind of like are standing there in this oasis in the beautiful African landscape and then take their hand and start doing this kind of thing like this and you're wondering what in the actual fuck is going on here. It's around this point in the movie that you start to notice what kind of movie you're getting. And the next scene is what really sells it all. When adult Sheena rides a zebra on screen and that early 80s synth Chariots of Fire S score kicks in, you know exactly what kind of movie you're in for. This is a corny ass goofy early 80s adventure flick. Think Romancing the Stone but nowhere near as deep and that's saying something because Romancing the Stone wasn't really that deep. Now besides the copious amounts of early 80s cheese that you first notice, the other thing you will notice about Sheena is that this movie looks really nice. Regardless of how light this narrative is, man, they really put some money into the location. There is some absolutely gorgeous African scenery here. Tons of some really great close-ups of African wildlife that we just don't typically see in this life. It's like if the BBC added some weak-ass human narrative to the Planet Earth series. The only thing missing here is David Ottenberg. It's a great looking movie, it just doesn't have a whole lot going on in the narrative department. The basic story is is that Sheena's adoptive mother, which is like the shaman of this tribe, is framed for murdering the king of Africa. Well, not really like all of Africa, just this one part of the country, which I don't really think is a real place. I mean, I'm sure they were in Africa when they filmed it, but what they call this place, I can't remember what it was. I think it was Azin or something like that. That might be a real place. Not 100% sure, but I feel like it's not. Now, she's framed by the African king's younger brother, who he himself wants to become king. And when this happens, of course, Sheena has to come save the day. Now, while all this is going on, we also have a a reporter and a cameraman played by Ted Weiss and Scott Donovan who are there covering the king's birthday. Of course they get mixed up in all of it and go out into the jungle with Sheena and we got mercenaries that show up to chase after them. The question would really be is why all these mercenaries were there to begin with. It's almost like they're staging a coup or something but when they kill the king the prince already becomes the king so he doesn't really need this military force because when he becomes the king he would have you know the nation's military force but whatever, we got some disposable mercenary assholes that are chasing after them, and we don't really give a shit about them, so when they die, it's just like, hell yeah, Sheena, you killed the bad mercenary guys. Good for you! And while that doesn't sound like the deepest plot in the world, because it's not, I didn't need a really deep plot for this movie. I just needed some good early 80s adventure fun. And you do get that here and there in this movie. It's everything in between that's a problem. There are long stretches of this movie that are just really slow and nothing's happening and it's kind of boring. Now, there are also some parts of this movie that if you're down with that whole cheesy early 80s adventure film vibe, you're gonna really like. There's some really cool parts. But damn it, man, like I said, everything in between is just a hell of a slog. Some of the stuff that happens in this movie is also really out there. Like, I get it was the early 80s, and these adventure movies were kind of corny, over the top, and hokey. But man, some of the shit here is just too far out there. It was too much for me to accept. Like, there's a part where, like, she takes a flaming arrow and shoots it at this truck and hits these barrels of gasoline in the back of this truck. Like, this truck has, like, 10 fucking 50-gallon drums of gasoline and she just shot it 
pierce them with an arrow on fire. And while, yeah, it lights up on fire a little bit, it's more like a casual flame and less of a eruption of gasoline. And what they do is the mercenaries have a helicopter come over and just come right over it. And I guess the downward force of the propellers put the fire out. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work out that way. I feel as if those motherfuckers would have exploded and blown that fucking helicopter all to hell. That coupled with the fact that every time Sheena gets into any type of jam, she just looks up to the sky, sticks her hand to her forehead and starts going, uh, and like fucking elephants and lions and tigers and bears show up to save the fucking day. Oh yeah, and monkeys, they show up for the fight as well. Once again, I don't have a problem with that as much. It's that 80s cheese goodness that I kind of like. But when they use this like psychic animal calling thing that she does at every fucking turn in the movie, it does get a bit old. And that helicopter thing is just dumb as fuck. Needless to say, the movie is goofy as hell and you need a hell of a suspension of disbelief to get into it. That and there are quite a few parts that really drag. Now this movie is rated PG, but this is early 80s PG. And typically, early 80s PG usually means PG-13. But in this case, early 80s PG means fucking hard ass R. This is the most R-rated PG movie that I have ever seen in my life. It's got blood, copious amounts of nudity, violence, just some really kind of brutal death scenes in some parts, and god damn that's a whole lot of titties in this PG movie. I get that PG was a bit more robust back in those days, but shit, how the hell did this thing only get a PG rating? I mean, I'm not complaining too much because the scenery is nice, but shit, that rating system's just out the fucking window. I will say though, Tanya Roberts, Go oh, on, girl. Now, the characters we get in the film are about as thin and weak as the narrative. Like Sheena and Vic, they are madly in love, and that's great and all, but why? He's professing his love to this woman within one day of meeting her, and all they've been doing is walking across the fucking Serengeti for a while. But for some reason, he just knows that she's his fucking soulmate, I guess. I don't know, but that's how the movie presents it to us. It also doesn't help that on top of the weak narrative and weak characters, this movie has extremely bad dialogue. Like, some of the dialogue doesn't even make sense, and what does, you're just like, w uh, what? Why is that there? Like, at one point when Ted Weiss and Scott Donovan are, like, arriving in Africa, and they're flying over this area, and the one guy says, hey, any white folk here? And the pilot just turns around and goes, oh, no, very black. I mean, what the fuck is that? Who the hell talks like this? And another part where they're, like, talking about an arrow that they've made, and she's all like, this is very good arrow you have made. And he's like, yes, it is. But it is top heavy. And she responds by, like, holding it like this and going, yes by three fingers. What? What the fuck does that mean? And why the hell are they talking like they're in a 1930s Tarzan movie? But we can't blame it all on the dialogue. Tanya Roberts, for instance. Man, she is gorgeous. This woman is beautiful, but holy fuck, she cannot act. She can gaze up at the sky like, great. I mean, she looks wonderful, like, for 50% of the fucking movie when she's just sitting there looking at the camera right past it, just up going, and yeah, she looks great doing that, but that's not really acting. That's just standing there naked, looking up to the fucking sky, just knowing you look good. Once again, not complaining too much, but when it comes to narrative, it doesn't really help. Blossom's dad, aka Ted Weiss, plays Vic, the love interest, and well, he's not much better. We get a slight bit of charisma from him, but honestly, it was probably all an accident. The rest of the performances are more or less what you expect from these early to mid 80s adventure films, which is to say that they're not really that great. They're not awful, but they're nothing to write home about. But typically we have much stronger leads and everybody else just kind of falls to the wayside. Here, the leads are really weak, and then it really puts a spotlight on everybody else. Now, I already said that the movie looks gorgeous, and it does. They used all real-world locations, and they look great. And when it comes to the effects, they're all pretty good, too. There's only one scene I could find that they used a blue screen, and it involves a helicopter, someone who's being thrown out over a waterfall, and some attack flamingos. Yes, you heard that right, attack flamingos. I don't even want to explain this whole situation because it's really fucking out there, but hey, just watch the movie. Look that scene up. It's on YouTube. It's worth it, I guess. It doesn't look good. It's blue screen. It sticks out like a sore fucking thumb because everything else here looks really good. Beyond that one scene, everything else is done in camera and it looks fantastic. I mean, they've got Sheena like swinging these big swings, like real big wide shots in an actual fucking jungle from like tree to tree or just across these big vistas. And while, yeah, I'm wondering what the hell is this vine attached to? It looks great and it is in camera real. It's very rare that you could see any wires or anything. There's really only one time that I said, oh, I see a wire. The rest of the time, it looked great. There's also an epic horse fall or really zebra fall in the end of the movie where the zebra is going like full bore and just fucking nose dives in the ground and the person that was riding it is like thrown across the fucking desert. It is fucking epic. This is one of the most hardcore 
horse falls I've ever seen in a movie. It doesn't necessarily make up for all the other stuff narratively that the movie's so lackluster with, but it, it's still pretty cool looking. All narrative and character stuff aside, just from a visual standpoint, this movie looks great. Guys, Sheena tries to be a fun adventure movie of the times, and it has its moments, but overall, it's just kind of bloated and has way too many drawn out boring scenes. The narrative is just pretty dumb, but not in that dumb fun kind of way. And the performances are just really bad. But there is still some early 80s cheesy goofy fun to be had here if you can put up with the other stuff. And the movie really does look fantastic overall. Unfortunately, all that's just not enough to save it from really only being worth checking out on USA Up All Night. It's not worth it. Hi, I'm Gilbert Gottfried. Hi, it's Ron on USA Up All Night. It's just not worth it! Once I started watching this movie, I did remember it from my childhood, and I did have fonder memories of it from back then. And as the series goes on, I'm finding that some of these memories that I had as a kid of some of these movies I'm going back and watching now, I should probably have just left them back then, and Sheena is one of those movies. This is really only going to be for the most hardcore 80s cheesy adventure flick lovers. So there it is guys, my review of Sheena. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below and become a jarhead and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that like these guys, and possibly join my top tier and become a bad motherfucker like my man Greg C and Dragon Khan. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, Stay sexy, Zimbabwe! My God, you've done it! So what's next on the comic book movie review list? Oh, so next week, we will see if we can believe that a girl can fly. Spoiler alert, you won't. I'm gonna need a lot to drink for this one.